Hey everyone, Julie Bark is here and I'm coming to you live to talk to you about staff with problems. And I don't know if you know anybody who has staff with problems or maybe the better odd is you probably don't know people who have staff without problems. Um, but I just spent the past week with child care owners and directors in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, who are part of my excellence community. And one of the topics that continuously comes up is how do we deal with staff with all these problems? So I wanted to come to you today with three criteria or three things to think about when it comes to having staff with problems. Um, before I get into the content, of course, I just want to give folks a, an opportunity to hop on, to say hello, to tell me about the, the problems that they're facing with staff, and to see what I can offer you in terms of some great strategies. But we're talking about staff with problems, and if you're here, please say hello. Please like this video, or love this video, and tag somebody who you know can benefit from this video. One of my missions is to make the journey of staff motivation a joyous one and to really give you solutions and strategies and ideas that will work miraculously for you. And I've got boatloads of them. But one thing kept popping to the top of my mind today as I was uh, wrapping up a call with my mentorship members was, all right, I've got to go on Facebook Live and talk to my community about staff problems and how we deal with them. Hey, Brittany, nice to have you here. And Brittany was just uh, there with me in Lake Geneva. And I love Be Live TV because I could like show her comments. She's saying, hey, Julie. And who's this? This one is, oh, telling Teresa to plug in or tagging somebody else saying you should watch this later. Yeah, and if there's anybody who you know who should watch this, please tag them below. Please share this video. There are way too many owners and directors out there who are in pain thinking, how do I handle these challenges that I'm facing with staff? And we're reinventing the wheel. We're alone. We're isolated. We're struggling. We're trying to put the pieces together by ourselves. So I really want to come to you with some solutions and strategies that will work. And um, in order for me to keep doing these live videos, I love to get your likes and hear your feedback and your shares. And it really encourages me to come to you more with more live videos. And like I said, I'm fresh off my uh, four days of presenting in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin with our excellence members. And today is kind of like my semi getting back into work day. Tomorrow I got to get on the bike and, and start my spinning again. You tell I'm very casual today. Um, but it's because, you know, I needed a little downtime after presenting for four days. But I did want to come to you with these tips. So if you have staff with problems, give me an oh yeah or a like. What kind of problems do they have? And you could share that with me. And even if you're watching this after the live broadcast, um, I do come back and I do reread all the comments and respond to whatever questions you might have. <clears throat> also, if there's a specific message, feel free to message me through my Facebook page here. All right. So content. Ready for this? Drum roll. I have three criteria when owners and directors come up to me and say, Julie, we have staff members who have problems um, and they feel compelled as part of who they are in this world that they must be the fixer of these problems. Um, so a lot of times we implement solutions into childcare workplaces that leaves the director or leaves the owner feeling lonely because they feel validated in a sense by all these problems that they get to fix. And I know I've been there as well when I was working in various jobs, it was always great satisfaction when people can bring problems to me and I had all the answers. But as a leader in this industry, you wanna get clear on a couple of things. When you're taking on the role of problem solver, well, first of all, remember, unless you're hired to be the staff therapist, you are not the staff therapist, and you should not voluntarily put on that role. And there may be once in a while type of circumstances that happen with staff where somebody really is in a tough position and needs some help. But if there are staff members with repeating 
patterns of problem after problem after problem, the answer you should really be looking at taking a different approach and thinking about how many of these problems do you want to take on in your leadership role and how many of these problems do you really want to circulate around your workplace. So it is a choice that you can set. It is boundaries that you can put into place. And I know it's not easy because you might say, well, all of my staff have problems. So let me talk to you about these three criteria. And then whatever question you have, please feel free to write it down. If I trigger something within you where you're in disagreement, please write it down. And I'm very happy to explain myself further. That's always the risk I take when you do some of these videos is that you don't get to get into the specifics of everybody's situations. So please keep in mind that I'm presenting a general video here with content, but I'm more than happy to read your questions and to answer your questions. And if you ask them while I'm live here, I will definitely take your questions live or at least say hello to you. When you're looking at the problems that you're facing in your organization or that staff members repeatedly come up to you with, ask yourself a couple of things. Well, actually, there's three things I want you to think about. Number one, does it enhance your vision and does it increase your energy? So if you're very clear on what the vision is, you should be able to feel that vision coming to life every single day. If the energy that's brought into your program by staff members do not feed that energy or do not enhance that energy, then it's really going in the wrong direction to take on the role of problem solver for all of your staff. The idea is to really get dreamier staff in place with each passing day. And I wholeheartedly believe that when you give staff members the opportunity to shine, I mean, really shine, really stand in an empowered space, they will rise to that level for the most part. There are some people who can't grow under your leadership and they have to grow underneath somebody else's leadership. But for the most part, when it's done correctly and staff are given the opportunity to shine and to be empowered, they will take that. They want to feel more positive, want to feel more productive coming into work. They just don't know how to get there. So when it comes to problems, ask yourself, does me in my leadership role enhance the vision coming to life by me taking on the role of solving and fixing everybody's problems? Most often, it doesn't. Most often, it depletes the vision. But we also have to get really clear on where we get our validation from as a leader in this industry. Many of us get our validation from fixing lots of problems, but there's a whole other scenario that can roll out and that we can put into place. So that's one thing. The other thing to think about and the question to answer is what you do for one person, can you do it for all people? Meaning your staff that you have in place, if you're going to help this one person continuously with this, 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 and this, and this other thing, is that something that you can really do for everybody? If not, you have to think that there's a better option. There's a better option. So if you can't do it for one, should it really be done for all? Now, keep in mind, there might be that once in a while situation that the husband just passed away, whatever it might be. Those things I get. But if it's regular reoccurring problems, you've got to ask yourself, how much of those do you want to dominate the workplace? The last thing I'd like to offer you as a tip or a question to think about is if when you help this person solve this problem, might there be information that gets revealed to you that might make you question that person's ability to perform their job effectively. Did you get that? If not, re-listen to this part because it's really important. When you go to solve or help somebody solve their problems, might there be information that's revealed to you where you're left scratching your head going, hmm, can this person really do the job? And what kind of emotional conflict will that cause within you? Plus, Let's say you find out information and you have to fire this person. Do you have things documented? And if this is a confidential conversation, how are you going to handle that when it comes to having to let this person go? So there are also legalities to really be careful of if you're going above and beyond to help people solve their personal problems. 
and some other professional problems. But there's legalities that are involved too. So if you find out information and you have to let this person go, or let's say you don't even have to let this person go, but let's say you get involved with helping a staff member fix his or her problems. And later on, not because of the problem you help them fix, but because of something else, you need to let them go. Let's say they then and go fire or file a complaint saying, you know what? I confided in her that such and such, such and such and such and such was true about my life. And she just no longer wanted me on as an employee. So keep in mind, there are legalities involved with you finding out too much information um, about each of your staff members. So keep in mind some of those things. Did you like those tips? Do they make sense? If so, please like this video or shoot me a comment through. I see several of you tuning in live, but shoot me a comment or let me know what your questions are. And I'd be happy in the next few moments to answer those for you. But please know in order to be successful in your role, it doesn't mean that you are the staff therapist. And a lot of times that works in opposition when you do take on that role, as opposed to really empowering your staff instead of enabling them. So you're empowering them to really handle problems and challenges and things on their own. Oh, how does that sound? That's a lot. So those are three criteria I would really think about is can you do it for everybody? Does it enhance the vision? Does it increase your energy in a healthy way? And are there any legalities that you have to be careful of when you're tackling some of staff's problems or personal issues or even professional? So I have much more preferred ways, and that's really to help your staff stand in an empowered space. So to help them go from feelings of victimized by all their problems to feeling like they're empowered to take control of the problems that they're currently facing so that they come out better on the other side. Remember, as always, your role is to coach your team. It is to coach your staff. And when I think about coaching your staff, I think about growing them. That's what it's about. It's about growing team members. And sometimes they cannot grow underneath your leadership role. Sometimes they'll go to a different leader and be able to make some tremendous growth happen. But that is how I want you to see yourself. You are growing them, you're empowering them, you're inspiring. And only when we bring them to a true place of inspiration can they then be really motivated. It's not about dangling that carrot in front of their face or that um, dollar bill to say, okay, here's a 20, come on, take another action step. It's really about helping them to find that inspiration from within so they have what we love to call self-motivation, right? All right, that's all I have for you in this video. If this was helpful, please like, please share, please tag a friend who can benefit from this because if you're in the childcare industry, chances are you probably have staff with problems. And I want everybody to be thinking about these three criteria when it comes to Am I the staff therapist? Do I want to jump into that role? Where's the boundary? And I will come back later and read through any questions or comments. As always, it's been great being here with you. And um, I'll come back with more videos as well. But this one was just on the top of my mind to come to you and share a few ideas on. And I will also post a link. I'm not sure if you've gotten involved with our excellence community yet or our excellence club. But if not, I'll post a link below this video so you could check that out and see if that's the right community for you. But we will be starting our monthly Q&A calls in there very soon. So I hope you'll come along for that journey and really create your positive, productive and profitable childcare business. We can make it happen. Can't wait. All right. I'm going to sign off. Julie Bark is here, your child care business success mentor and workplace transformationalist. And I look forward to our next video and next time together. I'll see y'all soon. Bye. Where's my hand? <laughs> Bye.